Hi everyone, for this video, I'm going to give you your course orientation for your subject in increase investigation and immersion. Increase investigation and immersion course is built up on the competencies that you have gained in your two practical research courses in your last semester, which is your practical research one and your practical research two. This course aims to further strengthen your critical thinking and problem-solving skills through the conduct of researches, whether it is qualitative, quantitative, or mixed methods, relative to your interests, experiences in immersion, and, of course, your academic track and strand. For the course syllabus, of course, we have our course description, I have already mentioned to you the aim of this subject to develop your critical thinking and problem-solving skills through the conduct of qualitative and quantitative researches relative to your interests, academic track, and strand. We also have desired learning outcomes that at the end of the completion of this course, I am expecting you that you were able to, number one, you were able to conduct and defend a group research, whether it is on qualitative, quantitative, or mixed methods by undertaking a rigorous process that involves A, you can decide a suitable research topic in different areas of interest and in the process, formulate clearly the statement of research problem. Letter B, you were able to select, cite, and synthesize related literature and use sources according to ethical standards. Letter C, describe adequately various research designs with emphasis on mixed methods design, sampling techniques, process of validating a research instrument, intervention if applicable, data collection, and data analysis. Letter D, you were able to gather and analyze data with intellectual honesty using suitable techniques. And letter E, you were able to form a logical conclusions, making recommendations based on the conclusions, and write and present a clear report. Also, I am expecting you to develop appreciation towards the conduct of research in a cross-wide spectrum of professional fields. And lastly, I am expecting you to gain an in-depth understanding of the need for intellectual honesty, academic rigor, and collaboration through the exercise of research. And for our grading system, we have... Uh, three major parts, which is your written work. I'll give you 25% on that. Performance task, which is 45%. And for your proposal is 15%. Final defense is 15% with a total of 30%. And if we make it a, a total from written report, performance, and proposal, then you will get a 100% for your grades, no? Your passing score is 75%. Now, for your description in your uh, written outputs that you might be able to see once you have your uh, paper check, if you see letter O, then therefore you got a grade of 90 to 100. VS, 85 to 89%. S is 80 to 84. FS is 75 to 79 percent and of course if you did not meet the, the expectations that i'm expecting to then you will get a grade of 74 and below final output students enrolled in this course are expected to work in collaboration with other students in class in conducting your research in a chosen area of interest the research paper as your final output is to be submitted following two formats. A. In a four-chapter pool paper aligned to the prescribed format of our school. And letter B, which is in IMRAD report. I'll teach you how to make an IMRAD report uh, later in our discussion. So the specific parts of these formats are outlined as follows. 
in writing your research report, once you are done, you are expected to have abstract, introduction, methodology, results and discussion, conclusions, acknowledgements, and of course, your references. And for your full paper, your chapter 1, which is your The Problem and a Review of Literature, it should have a background of the study, review of literature, research framework, a statement of the problem, significance of the study, and lastly, you must have your scope and limitations of the study. Then for your chapter 2, which is your methodology, you should have your research design, your participants, research instruments, your data gathering procedure, and of course, your treatment of data. How did you treat your data? And you also have your chapter 3. For your chapter 3, it must compose of the results and your discussion of your results. And lastly, for your chapter 4, you should have your summary of findings, your conclusions, and recommendations. And of course, do not forget to put all your references. And these parts may vary depending on your research design. So how are you be graded? So each chapter shall be graded based on the following rubric. For the major component, which is your chapter 1, the problem and a review of literatures, you have different indicators. Every time you submit a paper, there is an equivalent point for that and, if, and an equivalent weight. So for the background of the study, you must able to present a strong narrative hook. You must able to explain the research gap the research seeks to address. You must be able to state clearly the general purpose of your research and reflect coherence of thought. So these four will be given a weight of three each item. And also for the review of literature, you must be able to cite a minimum of seven references from reputable journals. Take note, seven references from reputable journals. B is, has been logically arranged to form a cohesive whole. And C, follows a correct in-text citation. And these items are also given in different weight. For citing a minimum of seven references, I'll be giving you five points. And for letter V and letter C, I am also giving you three points each. Then for number three, which is your research framework, no, I'll be giving you three points each for these two indicators. That letter A, which is you were able to present a strong relevant theory that supports the concept of your research. And for letter B, you must able to include a sensible research paradigm that represents the conceptual framework of your study. And of course, for number four, which is the statement of the problem, indicators are uh, for letter A, you must able to provide specific peer research questions that explicitly indicates the variables of interest. I'm giving you three points. And for letter B, you must able to include sufficient research questions congruent to the rest of the paper, which is also three points. For number five, which is the significance of the study, you must be able to mention all beneficiaries of the research, which is I'm giving you two points. And for letter B, you must be able to explain succinctly how each beneficiary will benefit from the conduct of the research, and that is three points. Number six is you must be able to submit your paper on or before the deadline. That is five points. I'm giving you a, a big weight for that because uh, time bounded is very impo important to me. And for number seven, I'm also giving you another five points, which is your paper must follow the prescribed format. No more than five errors in formatting has been noted. And 
Of course, lastly is the paper should be free from grammatical and typographical errors. No more than five errors of this type has been noted and for the subtotal of 55 points. For your learning plan and time on task, please proceed on next video. I will discuss it to you so that you are on time on your task. For the meantime, thank you and I want you to know that or to remind you that if you forget something, please don't forget to go back and refresh yourself here in your course orientation. That's all and thank you.